So I just saw the film Lift uh, the other day, and uh, we have to talk about it because, as a self-obsessed plane nerd, <laughs> there are some serious, serious things going on with this film when it comes to aviation and aircraft. Now, of course, I love a good heist film, and I don't want to take away from the magic of a good caper. So I'm not here to say that it's like bad or anything. I actually still quite enjoyed the film, but just part of me was really upset when it came to the plane. Uh, stuff in the film. So the first of all thing is in, in the plot, basically they need to steal some gold from an aircraft. And in the movie, it turns out that it's going to be a Swiss airline. They made up their own airline called uh, Air Air Swiss or or, or Zeiss uh, Air or something like that. And basically, it's uh, going to be flying an Airbus A380 from London Heathrow to Zurich, which is already such a small route. For such a large aircraft and it's actually quite hilarious to imagine a four engine aircraft doing what is almost a domestic flight across Europe even though England's now no longer in the EU and it's quite funny that they need to get on board this flight and then uh, go from Zurich and in the film when they go there the announcers say that it's a flight from uh, London Heathrow to Zurich and then on to Melbourne. One, four, one, two service to Zurich International Airport continuing to Melbourne. Now a flight from Zurich to Melbourne, Australia is a very far indeed and currently there are no direct flights from Melbourne to anywhere in Europe like not even to like Greece or anything like that. Qantas has flown a 787 from London to Sydney as part of their Project Sunrise but that aircraft had like very limited cargo, very limited people on board and it was designed to be as fuel efficient as possible. An A380 can't really do that, and especially not one that was like fully loaded ex with half a billion dollars in gold, which is actually quite a lot of weight. And <laughs> like right now, Qantas also does fly the Airbus A380 from uh, Sydney to Dallas, and so that's a 16 hour flight and that's quite long. To go from uh, Melbourne to Zurich would be substantially longer, and it's something that I would need to crunch the numbers and I'll throw them up on screen. But what's apart from that, it gets even more wilder because they're talking about the A380 when they're planning the heist and they say like, oh, like there's going to be 250 people on board. It's an Airbus A380 that can have a capacity of up to 800 people if it's all economy. Or, and generally they're around 650 or at the lowest possible scale, I think it's around about 450 passengers on board. Are you telling me that this is a plane that is flying with only 250 passengers that could normally carry 800 and they're flying <laughs> across Europe for like an hour long flight? Like this airline's not making any money apart from unless they're getting that gold that they're transporting the half a billion dollars gold because i can't imagine that this could be a regular service now an airbus a380 can be bought relatively cheap and we're seeing some kind of wacky second-hand uh, airline uh, airbus a380 operators coming up in the world today like global air which is going to be a new airline that only uses airbus a380s to go from london to new york but this one is really crazy when you see the cabin configuration. So in the movie, we actually see inside and it looks like it has a general normal um, economy class. But then the upstairs deck is first class and it literally has four seats. Like you go on that there is so much room on board the upper deck that it's better than a private aircraft. And I understand like Hollywood magic. I understand that these things need to be designed this way, but it just, it shook me to my core in terms of a business case that this aircraft only has four business, their business class seats, but it's like a first class cabin and there's just so much room. Like the people are walking around. Of course, there ends up being like quite a dramatic sequence with no spoilers that happens there, but they're walking around and they're checking it all out. And it's just, I'm, I'm shaking. I'm shaking at how much empty room there is up there. Like this airline operator is losing a lot of money. Hey, if you're loving this video so far, then I'd love for you to click that button to like and subscribe to the channel. The likes actually boost up the video on the algorithm and really help us, so thanks so much. 
But now we need to talk about the private jet that's in the film. In the film, they also get a private jet that they're going to use to help intercept this aircraft. And it's some experimental private jet that has NASA technology that can fly pretty fast. And it looks relatively interesting. It's got these uh, sort of on the nose, it's got some canards at the front to help it with its uh, steering because it's got a V-shaped tail for uh, <laughs> for the, uh, like it's got no uh, tail rudders there in the scene. And it's also got some other crazy features, like it's got an LED screen that goes along the bottom of the aircraft. And then on the top, it's got a sunroof. So you can look up above it. Now, a sunroof is not something that is completely out of the question. There have been some studies done on having windows on the ceiling of an aircraft. Uh, obviously something that large would require a whole bunch of uh, engineering and maybe material science that we don't exactly have yet to meet the regulations, but we're told in the film that this is not a regulation aircraft. Now, this uh, plane design is quite cool and we have seen some custom private jets in the world, especially from Italian manufacturers, but it was a little bit crazy to see this aircraft uh, be used in such a way to intercept an Airbus A380 and the scale seemed to be really quite uh, <laughs> different. Like it didn't make any sense that this private jet was so large compared to the Airbus A380. The other really interesting part about this movie is that the billionaire playboy who owns the private jet, he had stripper poles installed in his thing because he's, you know, some sort of douchebag uh, a, a, a billionaire guy. But what's funny is that the stripper poles like retract into the floor and they're like quite long. They're like eight feet tall because they're taller than the characters. And you're wondering like, does that go down and out of the plane when it's like retracted? And I just found it quite hilarious. Later on in the film, there are several crashes. I think there's a total of three crashes in the in the movie. And it really does speak to sort of the science. And now look, I'm not a pilot, so I can't speak to what people think of the part where the planes are used to intercept one another and what happens in air traffic control. And I'm sure there's plenty of crazy uh, stuff that gets uh, thrown around there by other pilot YouTubers. But I really wanted to stress the commercial side of this film and the crazy wacky things that seem to happen in it because it really doesn't make a lot of sense. And I for one would be very worried if I was working for that airline. So I wanna thank you again for watching today's video and checking out our little studio that we've got here today. I'm actually borrowing this from my friend, NFT Nate. And it's definitely something, if you wanna see more videos like this, more sort of just chatting with you guys and then also talking about aviation news and aviation topics, then let me know down in the description because I definitely wanna keep posting on this channel and it's something that I love to do. And I think if I make myself a little studio like this, then you'll see much more regular content. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.